All right, morning, boys. Good to catch up for a, uh, a coffee, something we usually do quite often when we're on tour together or hanging out, just catch up for coffee. It's kind of one of the things that we like to do. Um, I guess today we just catch up and reflect a bit on our Tokyo campaign and, and the silver medal that we just won and um, just have a chin wag, essentially. So maybe, Jerry, what are we up to at the moment and, and where are we and, and what's been happening the last week or so? We, um, yeah, quarantine in Perth. We got lucky enough to come back to Perth and... Uh... In the middle of the city, so we are sitting quite pretty in the intercontinental. Um, lovely bed, lovely food. Um, not so lovely company, I'm by myself. But uh, <laughs> we've got the FaceTime going with each other and uh, we get to, we got to um, um, not much. <laughs> I do spend most of my time, uh, so I was lucky enough to um, get the PlayStation in the care package. And the Wi-Fi here is fantastic. So we've been uh, playing Call of Duty, myself and Moose, and TTT Howards hasn't. Um... I'm walking in the bed. Sorry, Timo, you're a bit of a you're a bit of a card fan. You've been playing playing cards or catching up with the boys once you're in, in quarantine here. Yeah, we've been playing a bit of Five Hundred during the day. We um, found an app on on the uh, on the computer called Trickster or something like that. It's a, Play 500 games, so um, yeah, it's been pretty fun to play a bit of cards with Tyler, Blake, and and Sharpie. Um, it's always pretty fun when it's three versus one when one bloke's not that good at cards. So shout out to Tyler there. <laughs> plenty of plenty of situations like that happen on tour, but um, yeah, it's been good to catch up with the lads in the Arbo and do some bits and pieces during the day. Yeah, usually when I'm on the Facetime, like you can see TJ and he's got his bike riding suit hanging up in the background, so we can't see it now. But how many hours on the? Bike? I'm that one down for this one, boys. <laughs> didn't, want you, didn't want you to spend too much on me You been spending a few hours on the bike, Tej Or passing a bit of time on the bike Yeah, a bit of time on the bike Getting after it, it's quite good Cycling season's in full motion So um, It sucks though, the trainers The trainer sucks Do you, do you um, put the aircon on 30? Or... Hey. Timmy said he's, uh, he got the workout He put the aircon on 30 And did a little workout so he could have a little sweat Because he hasn't sweated in about a week and a bit I tried to do some. Like, I tried to jump a couple, of, like couple of days, just to like, like jump on my calves and just like so I wouldn't be sore. And I started getting sore knees. <laughs> <laughs> was that you? Was that you above me? Fucking up. Doing some laps, mate. You know how it is. Well, if anyone's interested, just go check out Jeremy Hayward's Instagram. He's put a few reels up telling everyone what he's been up to in quarantine, oh. his morning rituals, you know, his workout routine. So. If you haven't seen it, you keep up to date. You know, check out Jerry's Instagram. I had to, um, yeah. There's, I've got plenty of time on my hands here, so I ventured into the uh, the real the real arena. Um, mad respect for those influencers. Now they, uh, it's a quite fiddly work. Um, I do say it's an arena because I can easily exit uh, as soon as I exit quarantine. So um, probably two more reels up my sleeve, and that's about it for me. Yeah, I think. For me, I've spent a fair bit of time in here. Like, as, as we've said, we've got a lot of time on hand. So I've spent a fair bit of time like, writing a few things down and, um, and I guess, unpacking and, um, and just reflecting on the tournament. So there's plenty there. But, um, yeah, I think as time goes on, the, uh, you know, there's more pride and, and proudness in, in what this group achieved in a silver medal. And I think, for me, I just enjoy playing with this group of blokes and, and love this group of blokes. So I think going forward, like... Um, yeah, I'm just going to enjoy every moment, and um, and if we all keep playing together, then then who knows what's going to happen. Um, yeah. yeah, you yeah. say that. I was doing a quick quick little research before the um, before the uh, FaceTime here. So uh, there's only been 550 medals won in Australia. That's gold, silver, and um, bronze, and that's and that's rough because the team medals counted as one. But yeah, 550. Something something to be um, sort of proud of and reflect back on. It's pretty special. I think with the, with the, there's only ever been four four Kookaburra teams that have made the made the like final match, so we're one of those four as well. So that in itself, I mean, you've got to give yourself the opportunity. So that in itself, four, one of four teams over the, since hockey's been in the Olympics, it's not that's not too bad. I think it definitely hurt at the time with the going down to shootouts. It feels like such a tough way to finish a tournament. I reckon like we um. We spend so much time working on our game as a collective team, you know, 16 or 18 blokes working together, like collective effort um, to achieve, you know, scoring goals or defending goals. And then to come down to a situation where it's five blokes have to perform an isolated skill, I think that's really 
not just tough on them, but it probably doesn't represent the game or the skill that we've been able to, you know, kind of get as a collective. I think that that's why, you know, I would love to see these games go to extra time. I think um, that would give a great opportunity for, like, the team maybe with the most resilience or who had momentum at the end. I think it'd be really good from a fan perspective, but also from a player perspective to have extra time. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's something I've certainly thought about as well. Like in in my experience of the last Olympic cycle is like World Cup, we sort of same thing, like came down to a shootout um, and the Olympics as well. But um, like for us as a group, we haven't lost a game at a major or the last two majors after 60 minutes. So um, yeah, it certainly would be an exciting prospect. It hurts, but I don't know. Something I've thought about for sure. I think we were fully prepared, though. Like, we live and die by the sword. We had to know that that was going to happen. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. I think what we're thinking is just maybe as a as a fan or as a spectator or as a player, like, how good would that be to be able to go to extra time? I think um, everyone would really enjoy that. But we knew going in that possibility that we have to go to shootouts. We did it in the quarterfinal as well. Yeah, and we had prepared to, to win those moments. Um, unfortunately, Belgium, they've won two major titles on shootouts now, so it shows how important they are, you know, in our game, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, I agree, man. So I, I did an interview the other day and I got asked a question around like th- exactly this. And my first comment was exactly about live and die by the sword. You have to own it. Like at the end of the day, the rules are there and that's what it is. So we, we, we didn't get the job done in what we need to get done in. But as a spectator and for the people that are fans of the game, like the extra time is such a cool piece because it's an extra, like the game opens up, freedom starts to come into it. Um, you really start to see skill error and fatigue and, and that's when it becomes really exciting. So I think as a spectacle, having, um, having extra time before shootouts would be, would be good. It's hard for the people on the pitch because like you're in it and it's physically demanding, but um, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to put on a show. So um, I think that would be a really good, like bringing that back into the game would be awesome. Yeah. It's a shame that, I think a lot of the other sports do it. Like we saw the Matildas go to um, extra time in their quarterfinal game, probably got them over the line. I think they won 4-3. You know, they do it in basketball with OT. So a lot of the other sports are going extra time. So love to see it happen in hockey. I think like I was thinking about the, the journey and, you know, you certainly feel pride of what we achieved. But I think I'll feel like both emotions. I'll feel a little bit bitter about not quite achieving the dream that we set out to. But I'll also feel proud and um, a sense of accomplishment, but also a sense of, um, unity that we have with our group, you know, really enjoy the culture that we have with the Kookaburras and um, the boys that we play with. We always have each other's back. We say that before we go out and play, like we say, you got your back, mate. Um, and we look each other in the eyes and we truly mean it. And that's something that I've really appreciated and, and have gratitude towards this this team for. And I've enjoyed the, the mateship, the companionship that we've had, um, you know, and don't let the outcome bitter, bitter what, we, um, what we did as a group. Yeah. I feel I feel a bit the same in regards to the. I don't I don't really. I don't really feel comfortable wearing a silver medal for me personally. I'm I'm like we haven't we didn't win not first or last like that's how I feel about it as as us as a group and me personally like I'm there to win, but in terms of like the way we've touched people and connected people through like expressing ourselves through hockey. I think is is like that's far more important than like what we're chasing as the individual goal. Like so for us individually I'm disappointed, but you know, to hear that we're the only only team sport to be in the top ten of like channel seven ratings or broadcasts, you know, that's that's massive for the final match. Um, to hear like the messages of support and like people that have come out of the woodworks that um, I haven't heard from for years and then, you know, and that's just like all of us individually and then as a collective, like I think that's that's what's special because we're touching like a broader community of people. And like when I sit back and look at my career and it's all said and done, I think that if you've been able to inspire people, then like we're doing our job. Mm. I think that's that's got to that's what the the silver lining in the medal for me is. Like, yeah, that side of it. So, nice. yeah. it represents more than what it does to you. I think like one nice thing that I remember is like when you walk into the 
the hockey every time we got there, whether it was training yeah. for the game, all the Japanese supporters would be out there and they'd just be clapping us in, clapping us out. I thought Aussie, that was Aussie, wait, a... wait, Aussie, Aussie, wait, wait, <laughs> as we walked through the uh, tunnel. Uh, I reckon that was really cool. Like it got you in a good positive frame of mind. I reckon it was. We um... didn't get that game one though. There was, there was Donuts game one. We played Japan. Japan. Nothing. And by the end of the tournament, I swear, like half the population was there cheering us. <laughs> I was I was hoping they weren't doing it for any other team. They were just doing it for us. But yeah. I they were. Did you feel like, did you guys feel like aware that there was no crowd? Like, were you aware of it? Uh, not, no, not really. Only, well, only when you sort of sit back and like, once you finish and you look out, oh, no one was here. You sort of don't realise when you're playing. Yeah. You're still in the moment. You're still um, you're high alert. You, you don't really realise what's around, surrounding the um, actual field. That's how I felt. You didn't notice as much, Tej? No, nah, I'll admit the same as Jerry. Like, when you're in it, like, you're kind of focused on, like, everything that you need to be focused on. Like, you're not, you're not really focused on that. Yeah. Really, ever. I wasn't really. Like, when we scored, it still felt really loud and energetic. And, like, that's probably just us generating that. Yeah. But it still felt like every big moment that you would hear a crowd go nuts on. Like, I suppose they rise with the, the tempo of the game and so do we. So I don't really notice it that much. Definitely when I've played at other major tournaments or places with big crowds, like when you score, there's definitely much more euphoric moment, I believe. Like, so like, cause the crowd erupts, that generates more excitement and adrenaline within you. So I think like probably missed that a little bit, but we had to make up for it somehow. And I think we got around each other and smiled and laughed and had a good time when we scored. And yeah, Baz, you know, put, his, and... put his angry face on. Yeah, angry face like, on. I'm going to make it euphoric for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, all right, what about the, the village? Maybe, Timo, you run us through kind of what it was like in the village, maybe some of the facilities that the AOC had or what it was like, the experience in, inside the, the bubble that we were in. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, the AOC did a, a fantastic job in setting up what we had. I think um, I think everyone would agree that we probably had the best setup. Not that we saw everyone else's, but it's pretty pretty amazing what we had downstairs. So we had a full barista, um, full barista setup, a few coffee machines, um, lots of uh, we had an athlete pantry, and like a high performance pantry where you could uh, top up your own breakfast and stuff for for morning, so you didn't have to go to the dining hall. Yep. Uh, so that was pretty amazing. And then just lots of TVs and, and little common areas downstairs where we could sort of gather as a team or, um, yeah, we'll get together and have a coffee any, any time during the day. Um, we also had a, a good recovery facility downstairs. So it was, it was absolutely amazing. I think um, what we have back here in Australia with, with at WACE and, and other facilities that we've seen, it was, oh, it was top shelf over there. And as for the village, the food hall was massive i mean just imagine your biggest woolies and it's about the size of that um cooked food and and good cuisines and stuff like that so yeah it was pretty amazing how the, the common rooms with the tv i remember ariana titmus and uh, racing for gold and fox as well you'd sort of get a message around oh there's a there's a metal opportunity on here for the australians so everyone would head down to the um the main tv and cheer on everyone in the other sports uh, that's as close as we could get to the other sports uh, we weren't allowed to venture out to watch live. Um, so that team environment that the, uh, the Oz Olympic Committee provided was uh, awesome. A lot of yeah. kudos to the, um, to the guys making the coffee as well. Like those blokes were demons, mate. <laughs> like, <laughs> How many you reckon they make? Hard for two weeks of making coffees nonstop. It's because they make you six triple shots every day. <laughs> I reckon they did about 1,000 coffees a day. Probably. They I did. Well, Baz would have only taken up a fair portion of that. Couple of brews. Get the yeah. Well. No, I reckon that was probably my favourite highlight from the game. I reckon maybe outside of the hockey was Titmus's 400 there down at the down at, downstairs watching it with all the Aussie athletes, and it was a pretty good race. And I was pretty um pretty excited AOC building after that one. It was pretty hard to kind of see anyone with masks on, wasn't it? Yeah, I was thinking. How did you guys feel about being in a place or what was the vibe like where everyone else is 100% focused on doing their job? Like, you know, you, you look around and everyone's just steely-eyed and, and ready for their event. I reckon it's a pretty weird vibe. Yeah, weird, weird vibe. Um, well, we saw Luka Doncic at the bus stop, but he, um, he, did, he looked steely-eyed, so we didn't want to bother him. He was actually quite angry with the, um, 
the bus operator, so we, we kept our distance. You didn't get any photos, Jerry, with any famous athletes? No, I um I saw a few. There was a few, oh, because I was a bit more respectful that people haven't, there was famous people having lunch and people would tap them on the shoulder and, can I get a picture? And uh, it was, I was social distancing 100%, so I, I kept my distance from any, anyone. Um, no, no, no photos for me. <laughs> what about, I, did, uh, I did get a photo with um, one Eddie Ockenden, he's quite famous. Fourth, fourth time Olympian. <laughs> one, one memorable moment of, of a famous person is um, was sitting in the food hall and Yao Ming was walking around and the big, I don't know how big he is, two, two point th- three metres or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> little, little Sharpie was, um, was walking around and it was pretty funny. Yao went and sat down and he was still a head tall and Sharpie standing up. <laughs> oh, what a man. Well, you two are only dirt in the roomies. You guys had a pretty, pretty nice tea ritual going on every night on the balcony. Yeah, we had a pretty, uh, pretty sick room. Um, everyone knows that the four, the four boys that live together. So it was the four of us. I room with Sharpie, and then we had uh, Dil Martin and Simo. But um, yeah, we had a pretty cool view looking over the Olympic rings and um, the Tokyo Harbour and, and skyline. So um, yeah, most nights we'd uh, we'd make a tea and head out there on the balcony, um, which was pretty good. And yeah, we'd talk talk a bit of talk a bit of garbage or um, or I don't know if we had a game the next day, it'd be all of that day we'd be debriefing or something like that. So yeah, it was pretty good. Nice. Who kept the room clean? Hey, it was a clean one in that room. Yeah, um, me and Sharpie were pretty, pretty clean, but... What do you mean? What do you one, mean? I walked in and couldn't put my foot on the ground. There was stuff <laughs> everywhere. Must have been um, Tim Brand's room. Um, the big fella's not, not known for, um, for, for his cleanliness, but I'll, um, I'll leave that for him to talk about one day. <laughs> How about your room, Jerry? Uh, pretty smooth? Well, yeah, all, all smooth in my room. We, um, I got paired with Ed in the uh, smallest room out of the, uh, the entire team. So we were living in, only our, only our two beds just fit in the room. Um, and then into the lounge room, there was a great big uh, column holding up the um, entire building. So we got a bit jipped out, our six that was in our, our big room, but uh, we made it work. We, um, we, had the, uh, we had a little kitchen bench up and coffee working, a uh, little, uh, the TV on the projector, and uh, it just worked our room. But uh, Ed, he's he was in charge uh, when to go to bed, when to wake up. Um, <laughs> I, I had to turn the lights off every night. He, he, I was just doing what I was told. First time Olympian, and uh, he, tuck, the he would tuck you in or what? <laughs> <laughs> Bear with the fourth time Olympian. Uh, I've got a I've got a little sleep recipe. I've um, I listened to a podcast or. Um, or a prison documentary as I fall asleep. And this on my iPad, big light laring at my eyes. And <laughs> he's the only one that doesn't mind it because I think he sleeps with a shirt on his eyes. <laughs> <It's dead laughs> Everyone else complains about it. So it was the, um, he was the only one that could, could get paired with me. Nice. Oh, and the cardboard, the cardboard bed held up for the two weeks? Yeah, they were fine. They were, they were strong as. We, um, a few jumps on it, no worries. Um, even the mattress was quite comfy. I had no, I had no issues. You jump. So what are you doing? Star jumps on your bed, were you, mate? Just the, yeah, core exercises, stuff like that. <laughs> no, we had a good room. It was pretty chill, pretty quiet with um, Billy Charts and Trent, all pretty, you know, probably cool cats. And you know, the boys are on their games, and Trent and I would just be watching TV or something like that. And <laughs> didn't you meet one of the surfers? Didn't you? Yeah, I saw Julian Wilson before they went out to the. Um, went out to the ceremony, opening ceremony. I thought that was pretty cool because um, I'm a big surfing fan. So seeing him, I was like, oh, that's sick. That surfing's in the Olympic for the first time. And I went up and had a chat and just kind of saw what the conditions were like for the week. And he was pretty stoked because there was a typhoon coming through because they weren't expecting much swell. So uh, I was good to see him. And I think he's kind of retired from the, the World Surf Tour for now. So um, it was nice to, to see him before he's finishing up with his sport. Matt, yeah, well, I was just going to mention one highlight of the rooms before we uh, finish. Yeah, yeah. The toilets, the, the Japanese technology, they got the bidet running. <laughs> Big fantastic fan of the bidet. technology. <laughs> I think they, they should be coming to Australia pretty soon. Um, I'm a huge fan. I'd, I'd definitely get one in my house if, uh, if they're available here. If you build a house, yeah, you'll have one in there, won't you? 
Oh, it, was a bit, not, it was a bit better than well the last Olympics we had to we had to put our toilet paper in a little bag and put it next to the bin. We couldn't even flush it. Oh. Japan were all over. I reckon the sustainability Olympics was awesome, like how they yeah. recycled everything and how they made everything so sustainable. I reckon that's real progressive, but a real. Uh, I think great the medals are re- recycled phones, aren't they? Or yeah, something yeah. like that. Recycled yeah. phones, recycled beds. The dais was, you know, all recycled plastic. So that was good. Receive your medal. Yeah. Um. Or well, I'm pretty much done. I reckon. What are you guys looking forward to to catching up with, or what are you looking forward to doing once we finish up here in about four or five days? Tim, yeah, I'm. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, catching up with a few mates and family and stuff when we head back. But <clears throat> I think when um, yeah, when we leave here, I'm sure we'll all catch up and have a few cordials. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a bit of garbage and have a holiday uh, with the missus planned or anything, mate. <laughs> yeah, heading up to have a few quarters with the lads for a couple of days and then we're heading up to Broome um, for a few days, which would be nice. I think the weather's pretty good up there, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Trying to get out of the, the post-quarantine catch-up with the fellas, are you? Absolutely not, mate. <laughs> it's, spe- it's actually a specialty of mine. <laughs> what about you, Baz? Are you looking forward to getting on the, the real road, getting on the bike or catching up with yeah. the and family? Keen to ride the bike, keen to get out, keen to play some golf, yeah. keen to have a few beers. Yeah. Don't know about cordial. Uh, keen, keen, yeah, just keen to chill out, be normal, go down south, camping, just, yeah. Yeah. Don't necessarily even have to have a plan, you know, just sometimes it's nice to kind of roll through it. I think as well, like, everyone was riding that roller coaster with us back home, so it'd be good to just catch up with them and, and for sure just be normal again and have a few weeks off. We've been a pretty draining kind of, oh. well, it was an extra 18 months, extra year that we're expecting, so be good yeah. to get home and catch up with family and, and my wife's been dropping me off some care packages here in quarantine and waving from me waving for me from down the street. So um you know I'm looking forward to seeing her after six weeks pretty much in How's it feel saying that? How's it feel saying that wife? Does it feel good? Yeah it feels a bit more normal now. I think we've been married for about, about a year, eh? nine nine months. So it's getting pretty normal. Yeah. Heart what about Heart you Jerry? What's it like saying wife? <laughs> Yeah, not too far away, actually. Um, oh, hi. There's a goss, hot goss. That's exclusive. <laughs> That's exclusive. Hot, off, hot off the press right there. It's been about nine or ten years she's been waiting, so she's a patient girl. Uh, I don't know. I've got to save up. She's been asking for some ring that's costing about $25,000. <laughs> that's a bit of exaggeration, but it's, it's, a, it's around that figure. But um, me, I, I, yeah, I'll get out, see family and friends. Um, my dog. I can't wait to see that that boy. Um, I've actually got um, my off-field career planned. I've got to go get a go get some work done. I've got my um, final eight-week placement at um, the school where I'm doing my teaching degree. I've finished that. Hopefully, I'm done by November, and you can call me Mr. Hayward. <laughs> Maybe your kids will call you Mr. Hayward. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, once I've done that, I've I've just got Christmas and that plan. So oh, I haven't got much plans other than a bit of work. Yep. No, unreal. No, it was good to catch up, boys, and good to reminisce about the times we had in Tokyo and, um, you know, relive some of those stories and see what we're up, up to now. So, bloody good. Cheers for that. Well done, boys. Thanks, Moose. Enjoy the day. Cheers, Cheers in four hours. Cheers